And I want to move on to the various um, sort of natural disasters or perhaps not so natural disasters in some cases that we are watching around the United States. President Trump is actually in California today. He's expected to be briefed on the fires that have been raging there. And already we have seen a record amount of acreage burned this year in California as a result of this uh, these fires. This, as we're seeing yet another tropical storm bear down on the coast of Louisiana and another one um, over Bermuda right now. Uh, I want to bring in Bob Litterman. He is the chairman of a panel that just produced a report that came out last week called Managing Climate Risk in the U.S. Financial System. He is also chairman of the Ca of the Risk Committee at Kipos Capital. He's joining us from California, coincidentally enough. And, and Bob, this report that uh, you all produced was commissioned by the CFTC, and you basically come to the conclusion that climate risk is indeed going to potentially infect the U.S. financial system. Um, we don't tend to see that much of certainly an equity market effect when we get the fires or we have gotten various hurricanes in the past. What was your finding in terms of how that could change? Well, I, first of all, I think that there have been uh, significant impacts on valuations of companies. Uh, you know, the energy sector for many years now has been underperforming. Uh, and uh, you've seen companies like PG&E that went bankrupt a couple of years ago after forest fire. So there are definitely impacts. And when we brought together financial market participants, ranging from uh, banks, insurance companies, oil companies, ag companies, as well as academics and NGOs and the environmental space. Uh, we all agreed. There was no disagreement on the reality of climate change, the risks that it poses to society, and the actions that we need to take. So we were able to create what I would call a roadmap for, <clears throat> excuse me, not just financial regulators, but all the participants in the financial markets. And uh, significantly, the first recommendation, and I would say the most important, is that we need to create appropriate incentives to reduce emissions. We don't have that now. That's a fundamental flaw in the financial system. And what the participants in the financial system recognize is that we can't create those incentives on our own. So we can't solve this problem without collective action. And uh, you mentioned what's going on in California. It is just, you know, we've had three weeks now of uh, hazardous air. This is, a, you know, this is real. This is affecting people's lives, and uh, it's something that has to be addressed urgently. There's no disagreement among financial market participants about that. Bob, as I understand it, you're about 17 miles south of San Francisco. You're along the peninsula. I'm here in Los Angeles. I get notifications every day not to go outside. Uh, of course, coupled with the coronavirus pandemic, where we're kind of have been forced to be indoors during this time. When you think about the lack of disagreement you're saying, especially among the people that you, of course, spoke with for this report, but also, of course, Democratic governors, there is a leadership vacuum, though, right, when it comes to the top, when it comes to Donald Trump, who is going to be in our state today. How do you reconcile that, right? Because I understand that a lot of these organizations can act sort of independently, but at, at the same time, if the vision is not there, if we're pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, if we're pulling out of a lot of these things um, and the incentives are not from a, a national perspective, how do market participants actually see this as a priority here? Well, it is absolutely a priority. And, you know, we've been seeing the, the COVID crisis and the, uh, the other impacts that have... Uh, very similar lessons for us about risk management. And uh, one of those lessons is the importance of acting quickly. You know, one of the things about risk management is that time is a scarce resource. If we have enough time, we can solve any problem. You saw with COVID the impact that just a short delay made. There was a Columbia University study that estimated that the number of deaths was double in you know, uh, March and April and May because of a few week delay in addressing that crisis. Similarly, with respect to climate, we have not addressed it yet. We absolutely need to address it. And addressing it means creating the incentives to reduce emissions in this country and globally. We need a globally harmonized response. And so I would say right now, what you're seeing in Europe is a much more proactive approach from the government. You've also seen that in Asia. Another lesson from COVID is how we're so dependent on each other. Our own action 
It's a collective action problem. That was true with COVID. It's also true with climate change. And it's a global problem. We can't solve this on our own and we can't build barriers that will protect us. And so we absolutely, it's, it's, and all of those mean that it's a political problem, as you suggest, and we need a political solution. Now, how that happens, uh, you know, we, we need to move forward, but uh, we haven't done it yet. And we absolutely need to do it and we need to do it quickly. One of the things that I will highlight is that you can think of the maximum temperature that we're going to reach you know, five decades down the road or more as being a, a good metric of risk. And each year that we delay, that maximum temperature goes up. In fact, uh, in three years, you can push that maximum temperature up about a tenth of a degree, which uh, C, uh, centigrade. And that is a, a big impact. And it means there's more risk and so on. And we can't turn back the clock. We should have addressed this 20 years ago but uh, we've got to address it now before it gets too late. Yeah, Bob, uh, one quick question here. When you think about the implications, one of them is home values, right? And the prices here in California that have been uh, extraordinarily high, even amid this economic crisis. When you think about, you know, even the interview with former governor Jerry Brown, he said, tell me, where are you gonna go then? Uh, where will these people who are seeking and flocking to California for innovation and for these opportunities going to go? How do you see this actually having a long-term consequence, especially perhaps as COVID has accelerated this work from home phenomenon and this ability to be remote? Well, boy, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a big question and uh, no one knows what's gonna be the impact. I will tell you that this year, we've now had three weeks in a row of hazardous uh, air, as you know. In fact, that has now spread, not just from the Bay Area and a few areas around fires, the, the entire West Coast. Many of us are becoming very familiar with an app called Purple Air, which we look at on a regular basis to see what's the particulate. And, you know, is it safe to go outside? One thing I'll tell you for sure, home values are not helped by having hazardous air multiple weeks, maybe even months this year. You know, we're, we're just at the beginning of the fire season here in California. Two years ago, when we had the Paradise Fire and two weeks of bad air, that was in November. And here we are at the beginning of September, and we've already had three weeks of bad air. So uh, I don't know where this is going in terms of, you know, all of the different changes. Uh, people say that the COVID, you know, virtual working from home has accelerated a lot of trends. One of those trends is lack of uh, travel. And I must say for some of us who are spending a lot of time on airplanes, uh, being able to do things like this virtually is very helpful. But, you know, is the long term where it's going? Uh, we don't know. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.